This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, how are you, everybody? Yeah, it's me, it's Alex, and it is the Ramble. And we go from now until, uh, uh, well, until midnight tonight, I guess. That's what we do. And um, uh, we hope you'll enjoy it. Anyway, we got a guest tonight, and uh, we may as well go check in with him right now. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the fabulous Will Durst. Hello, Willie. How are you? Hello, Alex Bennett. How are you, sir? I'm doing just fine. How have the last couple of weeks been treating you politically? Uh, it's been very fecund. Uh, it's been... Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I never heard that word before. Fecund. Oh, fecund. Maybe I've heard it as... F-U-N-D. Yeah, maybe, it's may- like fertile. Yeah, maybe I've heard it as fecund. Oh, I see. Uh, maybe. I don't know. It's been fertile. You know, you use the goddamn big words on us here in the country, and we don't know what you're talking about. You damn intellectual elites trying to trick us with your multiplication tables and shit. But you don't tend to do your comedy show in any holler somewhere. You know, I'm going back to Colorado and Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and so I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm how are the, how are those people to work for? Are they uh, are they okay? You know, my show, I get the Illuminati. I get the true believers. Uh, I actually, when I do press, I say this show is not for everyone. If you're a big Trump supporter, you are going to be disappointed and maybe even a little bit angry at the end of the show. I wouldn't come. And uh, fortunately, uh, they are not comfortable going out to theaters and uh, see, seeing... Um, uh, sarcasm and irony, and uh, they like their humor up front and good natured. So, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find the sense of humor about all of this is has kind of waned in a way? Because I was saying the other day that it was funny for a while. <laughs> it was cute and you know almost kind of nearly funny. Watching him propel himself across the room by lighting his own verbal flatulence, but but now not so much. Did you see him push uh, the prime minister of Montenegro? Yeah. Oh, what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, what a, he's an oaf. He's an oaf. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know he said, "Out of the way, pal." <laughs> well, my yeah, my wife always likes to come up with stuff uh, that that she feels is the newest gaff that he did and there was one the other day i didn't see this but where they were all walking and he was taking a golf cart that was reported in the new york times i have yet to find it as well yeah so you don't know if it's well it, but if it's the new york times it's got to be true yeah <laughs> the uh, uh the ancient town of whatever it was in italy where the g7 met yeah, and of course he had to have his staff investigate to see how G one through G six went because he he w- didn't want to just catch the secret. <laughs> you know, G it used to be the G eight, but Russia got kicked out for annexing uh, Crimea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Didn't so it, now, was it, wasn't it a G? Was it a G twenty? Wasn't it a G twenty at one time or something? If I remember There's correctly, another G twenty. That's different. This is this is just the top guys. Oh, I see. There's another economic. This is the special like club. Yeah. This, yeah, they have to have they a have membership card day on this one. Yeah, Carl Malden. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, but I mean, it it just it it's kind of ceased to be funny. I you know it was humorous. It was uh, uh, fecund or whatever the word was you used. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, hilarious. But now it's just not funny. It's embarrassing. I'm an American, and the rest of the world is laughing at us. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome to what the, we've been doing to them. And, and yeah. he thinks the Saudis loved him because they gave him a sword. They just knew that he could be had. That's all. 
He was a sucker. You know, he was in town, and they were they were going to get him in the car and take him all the bad parts of town and sell him souvenirs. <laughs> he's not just a whore. He's a cheap whore. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, he just, you know, I, I'd like to think that a guy who had made that much money was bright on some level. You know, I'm uh, you talk about Gerald Kushner, for instance. I don't think Kushner's stupid. Kushner's smart as a whip, right? But man, well, you know, I've, I've never heard him talk. Uh, well, did you see the thing? You didn't see the thing John Oliver did, where he said you never see him talk, but we do have a clip of him talking, and it was oh, really? Ku Kushner giving a speech or saying something or whatever, and they dubbed in Gilbert Gottfried's voice. <laughs> Yeah. It's good to see Gilbert still working. Well, they, they say, oh, Kushner's in a lot of trouble. Do you think he's in a lot of trouble? Well, what he did was he went to the Russian ambassador and he said, uh, we want to set up a direct line between the White House and uh, the Kremlin. You know, like a red, red phone, mm -hmm. only our intelligence agency won't be monitoring it. So it'll be just a direct private line, and <laughs> the intelligence agency is a bit aghast, uh, and, you know, this could be, I don't think it's illegal. See, that's the thing. I don't well, think it's well, illegal. Did he do this after Trump became president or before? During the transition. During the transition. Isn't that logical that they would try and create some kind of way to speak to the Russians and to do it so the Russians would feel comfortable with it. Yeah, see, there's see, your problem. Yeah. It's not illegal. And and Kushner isn't going to drop, a, you know, it wasn't Kushner's idea. You know, it came from higher up. And uh, I don't think Kushner's going to roll over on his father-in-law, you know. <laughs> Although, if the tables were turned, Trump would give Kushner up like that faster yeah. than free beer disappears at a frat party celebrating a homecoming going over Auburn. <laughs> Which is, which is really but, I mean, uh, everybody, you know, everybody's into this whole thing about, uh, oh, well, we're going to impeach him and we're going to find stuff on him. And we're going to, they're not going to be able to impeach this guy. Just get used to the fact that he's your president and now you have to come up with ways to, number one, stock the pond over at the Congress, okay, for, and pay attention to that, and to um, uh, uh, find ways to blunt him. I agree. You know, and that it's I a agree. waste of time saying, oh, well, we're going to find somebody, something to impeach him on. And, oh, this <laughs> is, the look at what he did here. This is illegal. Yeah, all of it's probably illegal, but, you know, you got to prove it. You got to go into a, into a, into into the Congress and uh, make it. Uh, uh, well, the a, House a impeaches them, and the Senate votes on it. Yeah. So that's neither one of those is going to happen. Yeah. So, folks, no. get over it. Don't waste yeah. your time. It's a waste maybe of energy. Maybe in twenty nineteen. You know, maybe. Well, it, no, I, it's a waste of energy, and the only non-waste of energy is between now and then establishing the Democratic Party or whatever party, as having the right ideas and, and starting to stock the pond in the Senate and in the Congress um, for uh, a, a better way of life, as it were. But don't well, sit around. Don't we got to protect America from him. We have to put a seatbelt or, you know, some padding around America. Well, you can make things rough for him. I mean, you know, certainly every time any one of his little things goes to court, one of his executive orders goes to court, it seems to somehow just, you know, go yeah. nowhere. Yeah, because it's unconstitutional. Yeah. The thing is, what I'm afraid of is that uh, America is going to be attacked either actively or in theory. You know, it, we could just be attacked in theory and they can yeah. claim that we were being attacked and show some bogus evidence. And then all sorts of shit could come down. Uh, people rallying behind our, our glorious leader, martial law declared, people have to sign a loyalty oath in order to do 
uh, business with the government, and then that trickles down, and then people start uh, uh, enforcing the loyalty oath. Right. So shit could go sideways. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah, you, you're afraid he's not going to be able to handle the uh, uh, a, a, a real crisis, is what you're saying. Yeah. No, I'm I'm afraid he's going to be in collusion, which is the famous word, collusion, yeah. uh, to create a crisis. Well, I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of argument to the fact that 9/11 was in some ways caused by by Bush, because they they knew it was coming, but they knew that if it happened, it would be good for Bush. Well, the same could be said of December seventh, nineteen forty one. Yeah. Well, uh, there are some people who believe we knew uh, Pearl Harbor was coming. In right. fact, the the the, uh, the Japanese um, ambassadors left the day beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch their families if their families are still here. Well, you know, at that time, Roosevelt had no way to at least get the hearts and minds of America into getting into uh, World War Two or the war in Europe. And so, therefore, his decision was, uh, let this thing happen that we think is going to happen, and then we will have an excuse to arm the country, to go to war against Japan, and while we're at it, then we can go to Europe. Yeah, look at, look at the fervor that happened. Oh, yeah. I mean, all across America, how many, how many men went to, went to, you know, sign up for the military? You know what the biggest problem was? If there was ever a just war, if there was ever a war we went into where we we were pretty right about doing it, all right? It was World War II. Yeah. And we came back and we felt good about ourselves. <clears throat> we were lighter by about 500,000 human beings. <clears throat> and a lot of people came back and had problems mentally and otherwise and, uh, you know, in those days, I remember growing up in the uh, in, in the late uh, um, '40s um, as a kid, seeing people with one leg walking around the neighborhood and with arms missing and things. You saw a lot of that, a lot. Yeah. But we felt good about ourselves. We felt we had done something just and right, and that we had prevailed. And since then, we have never ever fought an honorable war. Because we justify it by still having that attitude that look at what we did in World War II. Yeah, well, well we got drunk on righteousness. <laughs> we get drunk on righteousness, exactly. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, I just, I just think that we, I can't think of a war we did that you know was Korea a, a real uh, important war? I mean, was it a not war even World War One? was as righteous as World War Two, yeah, well, because Hitler was, you know, just, uh, um, uh, just, uh, he's the pinnacle of evil in, in terms of, and I'm sure he didn't think he was evil, you know, he, he had bad experiences uh, as a kid, and, you know, nobody wakes up and wonders how deep of a reeking heap of steam friend, you know, yeah, he was a vegetarian, dog loved him. You know, he didn't think he was a bad guy. Nobody thinks he's a bad guy, but he was a bad guy. You know, I, and I, I, was, I question how much Hitler knew of what was going on behind the scenes. How much did he know about the concentration camps? I mean, did he order them? He signed off on the final solution. He signed off on the final solution. Okay. But I just, I just wonder, I mean, you're right. I don't think it was his idea. You know, I think there might have been, he might have had somebody eviler. I think, it was, I think it was, I, he I, might have had a Steve Bannon. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think maybe it was Steve Bannon. I think Bannon has lived forever. <laughs> you know, uh, but you're, no, you're right. I mean, Hitler probably thought, hey, I'm doing the right thing. How can I hate what I'm doing? I'm a nice guy. My girlfriend loves me, as you said. My dog loves me. Uh, and all these people tell me how great I am. And I'm a vegetarian. I don't kill animals. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> what can you say? I you know. know. I mean, uh, so I mean, uh, it, we, we, it, but in this case, you know, we just have. A, I, I worry about the big problem. Let's let's say there is a 
unrelenting amount of terrorism that starts in this country. He's not prepared to handle it. He, you know, he can talk a big talk. He can say, I don't like what happened. Oh, that's terrible. You know, oh, this is, those are thugs that are doing it. But it's all talk. It's not protecting us. Yeah, and he's going to leverage uh, unconstitutional reactions because of it. Uh, but we, we, you know, we have the infrastructure in place to take care of it. The, the amazing thing is the intelligence community hates him so much. And he doesn't end this. He doesn't because he he can always get past shit. You know, I mean, you think of his gig as a New York City real estate developer, and it's all based on propulsion and and momentum, and that's why he just promises stuff to get him from A to B. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. And then he gets to B, and there's never any recourse. They don't. They don't say. But you said you were going to do that. Well, I'll do it late. And he just keeps going forward to get to the point. And all these people are left behind. That's why he promises all this stuff that he's going to do, whatever it takes, just to say yes to get to the next point. He believes in propulsion. He doesn't believe in ramifications. And uh, in government, there are ramifications because you have these these checkpoints. So that's he he just he uses bullying. He uses threats. He uses promises. He insults. He just goes forward, just keeps going forward. And he doesn't realize it. You don't piss off the intelligence community. They blew their trace on the Russian ambassador just to embarrass Jared Kushner. They blew that trace by announcing that they had, or whoever leaked it to the New York Times or Washington Post, to, they, they blew that trace that they had it. They had a bug on the Russian ambassador, and they blew it because they didn't care because they want to embarrass Trump. Well, what about, you know, he talks about leaks in the White House. You know, he's paranoid about there are people leaking stuff from the White House. And yet the biggest leaker of all is Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's gotten to the point where the British have said, we're not going to tell you any more secrets. You, you know, we, you don't, we, we, we don't, we don't, we you cannot be trusted with our secrets. Germany said the same thing. That's what Angela Merkel said the same thing yesterday. Really? Yeah. She said, well, we're going to have to do this alone. We can't, we can't count on America anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my. It's ridiculous. And then you look at, you know, I mean. Uh, he was inaugurated on January 21st. That was 130, 131 days ago. Yeah. Uh, and and already multiple congressional investigations. Already a special prosecutor has been appointed. I mean, he's in less than four months, he's gone from zero to Nixon. He's gone from zero to Nixon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Son of a bitch. You know, oh. Uh, but he, 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 you know, uh, uh, the one thing I told people when he started uh, leaking this stuff is that the great danger in him leaking it was the fact that uh, uh, other countries would not be willing to trust us with the uh, secure information. Exactly. And that puts him in a very bad situation because we've just we've got to rely on our own uh, only upon our own uh security forces here in America, people like the CIA, people like the FBI, and, and they're, they're not the most efficient people in the world. You know, so, I mean, it, it, it's, it's just, it's an amazing thing that's happening here. Um, and it's funny, he leaked the fact that he leaked uh, the other day. Uh, he was, because remember, he, he had that meeting with the Russian ambassador and the other Russian diplomat in the Oval Office, and no um, domestic press was allowed, so we only found out uh, and, and from uh, the, the Russian news agency, and then it, it came out that he had told them some information that the Israelis told us about ISIS, and then he was in Israel on this trip, and he said, I never said it was Israel. <laughs> well, my favorite thing, my favorite thing, 
of, I never said it was Israel. I never, no, he kept saying it over and over again, too. <laughs> he kept saying, it wasn't Israel, it wasn't Israel. I didn't say it was Israel. I didn't say no, it was Israel. No, he didn't Israel. say it wasn't Israel. He said, I never said it was Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Intimating was Israel, but he never said it. It was other people who said it was Israel. The best one, the best one is Duarte, where he told the, the president of the Philippines, I guess that's his name, Duarte, uh, that uh, we had submarines off the coast of North Korea. Uh, number one, you don't tell Duarte that. Okay, you don't tell anybody that. It's a secret. Submarines go underwater for a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to be found. They want yeah, to be able to spy. They want to be able to put their periscopes up and look at stuff, you know? But they go underwater for a reason. They don't float on top of the water to get to where they're going, you know? And, I mean, the man is just, he has no sense of what you don't tell people. It's almost like he's bragging. I know this, you know? Yeah, I know something you don't. Yeah. yeah. And he's telling all the wrong people. To be, for him, that's a negotiating tool. And that he he's always been... You know, when he got inside information, that was a negotiating tool for him to get what he wanted. Yeah. And sometimes he would share it with people to prove how powerful he was. And other times he would use it against them. To yeah. him, it's just a negotiating tool. He doesn't understand. So, I, you know, I wonder if there's anybody in the White House that's capable of telling him, stop it. I think Ivanka. And I think that's it. Yeah, but he doesn't apparently he apparently doesn't listen to her. You know, the minute he's off script is when he's dangerous. And when he's on script, he's reading the fucking teleprompters so badly. Have you noticed how badly he reads a speech? You know, it's like, I want to read it and get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and he emphasizes the wrong words, and then he tries to throw, he tries, he goes off script for a couple of words to, because he repeats everything. He repeats everything. You know. I mean, you know, he always like accused double talk. Well, he, he always he always accused Obama of using the teleprompters, and Obama, at least when he used the teleprompters, knew how to use them, knew how to make it look like he wasn't reading it. I never understood that 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 accusation. I never. He uses everybody uses a teleprompter since Eisenhower. Everybody well, there's a, there's a good reason for it. You don't want to say something wrong. You know. Remember when uh, when uh, Sarah Palin uh, was accusing Obama of using a teleprompter, and then it turned out that she had notes inked, felt tipped onto her hand while she was talking about <laughs> Obama's use. You know what? You it's, know what? It's the high school about? crib sheet. <laughs> That, yeah, that's a fifth grade teleprompter. That's what that is. That's <laughs> for teleprompter for people who can't read fast. Well, the, 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 the point is the reason you use a teleprompter is you want to write the speech ahead of time so that you don't go off script, so that you don't say something wrong that might be mistaken, and, and you've, you've worked out your words ahead of time. There's nothing wrong with a teleprompter. What's wrong is when you look like you're reading it. Yeah. Well, he came to that skill so late. Well, and he, this is another reason why you he know, came to, they came to the skill of being president too late. It's uh, our politics. This is why traditionally the presidency has not been an entry level position. Exactly. And as I said before, the trouble with Trump is he isn't used to the fact this is the first time he's ever had a job where he wasn't the boss. Right. You know, where and he the, where he boss. is an employee. He doesn't and know how to be an employee. He's had oversight, huh? constant oversight, yeah. and he bristles. But what I love is that any of these right-wingers, when they don't like what is being reported, go, well, that's fake news. They, they brush aside any fact that may come across as fake news. That's their excuse. You know, stupid. It's really yeah, stupid. It's, it's, a new, yeah, it's their new chew toy. So, news, I, so I, anyway, things are good for you. This has got to be just a, just a wonderful thing. There were a couple of weeks back where every day there was a new gem thrown every your way. Every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, yeah. a regular, regular thing. 
It's well, pretty exciting. Well, hey, Will, you know, we've we've blown another 25 minutes here. Well, uh, it's been great having breakfast with you. Lunch, your time. Lunch, yeah, we're doing this around too. noon uh, in New York and 9 o'clock in the morning there. For a comedian, he gets up awfully early. And uh, get me a gig in New York so I can come and uh, visit you alive. Hey, get me a gig in New York. <laughs> I'll, I'll do the same thing. Anyway, hey, Will, great talking to you again. Let's do this in a couple of weeks, okay? I'm totally up for it, Alex Bennett. Thank you very much. Will Durst, ladies and gentlemen. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome. Uh, that was Will Durst, and that was recorded earlier today. Let me explain something. That's, one the, that's a, a big experiment for us. That's the first time we've ever had one of our guests uh, literally pre-recorded. Uh, and there were some problems with it because I pre-recorded it on another machine and uh, keeping the sync going so that I had to constantly adjust the sync while it was on. Uh, and um, so if, you, if that bothered you a little bit, I'm sorry. We're going to correct it in future weeks because what I'm going to do is record it on this machine and then it will probably play beautifully. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. In any event, it is time now to open up the Skype lines. Yes, yes, yes. This is when we talk to everybody. Uh, and um, let me see here. I've just opened the lines. And so all you have to do is, is call me. Just call me, call me, yes. And uh, we will, uh, we will uh, uh, talk to you. The way in which you can call me is that you get a thing called Skype at Skype.com. And if you already have it or you don't have it, get it. Put it in your machine. It's very easy to install. And you just give me your first name, last name, your email address, and an ID you want. We have an ID. It's GabNet Live, and that's what you type in when you say contact. And if you go up to Add Contact, put in GabNet Live, we'll then say, do you want uh, us to make you a contact? You go yes. And then when I see it pop up here, I'll make you a contact, and you can call and be part of the Citizens Panel, which is not just one person, not just two people, but upwards to nine people at a time with me, all talking and discussing about the day's events. Okay? So uh, give me a call, and we're waiting for somebody to call me now. Um, we did a show earlier today. In fact, we ran the uh, Durst interview at that time. Uh, it was really fresh then. And uh, we did a thing called The Rampage today. And um, oddly enough, I mean, we, did, we only had two callers, right? Uh, Scott called, and uh, I'm trying to remember who else. Uh, uh, Ebert. Uh, Ebert. Is his name Ebert? I think I got his name right. Anyway, we had two people calling, and uh, that wasn't much. But it was something because we're now trying occasionally to do an afternoon show. Not all the time. Like I'm not going to do one tomorrow, but I might do one Thursday. I don't know, but I'll let you know ahead of time. And uh, it's called The Rampage, and uh, it's not on every day. And it's only on Facebook Live. It's not over the GabNet network. We're not running it there either, Okay. Uh, we're just trying to see what kind of an audience we can get. And we did a very, got a very large viewing audience today. So, um, you know, we're going to keep trying it and see what we can have develop. But meanwhile, I'm waiting for you guys to call, and nobody is calling. Uh, this is the new thing that happens. Everybody sits around and waits to call because they are afraid that if they're the first to call, they will have what's called the curse of the first person. And that is that the first person who calls usually gets screwed up or something like that, and then he has to call back. But that's okay. Please call me. I don't want to sit here waiting for you to, to do it. Uh, and I wish I had cartoons I could play or whatever. But anyway, that's the first time we've actually attempted to play a video on this show and I think it worked okay it was just that it was out of sync and I don't think that has to do with the system here it has to do with I did it on a different system and it, it, you know things like that but we'll th these are experiments that will be solved as time goes on and uh, uh, but we hope you enjoyed seeing Will this time and seeing the person we were having uh, doing the 
um, the interview with. The, a lot of the other people, uh, Ruben I'll be able to have on video uh, because Ruben, again, Skypes me using a camera. However, I don't have a camera for um, um, Stephen Pearl or Larry Bubbles Brown. Larry Bubbles Brown doesn't even have, he has, this is what he has, internet dial-up. Who today has internet dial-up? except for Larry Bubbles Brown. I can't believe nobody's calling me. You know what I may do? Well, here we go. Phil's calling. All right, so we, we have Phil. It'll be just Phil and I. Oh no, here comes, here comes Renee. Here comes Renee. Okay, uh, so I can blast it off. No, you didn't. Okay, now turn your camera on, Phil. All right. Uh, okay, let's see if we get you. And uh, in fact, let me, uh, let me uh, have everybody go okay, over. Okay, who's gonna get kicked off first? Huh? Oh, I I already got kicked off. No, there, there we go. Now he's oh. fine. What, what's yeah. that big light in back of you? I don't know. He's been uh, portraits. It's um. Don't play. Oh, it. Don't. don't, don't it, it, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How's that? It, is, <laughs> no, it, are, is everybody waiting to not be the first person? Is that what the new thing is? Hey, it was great to hear Scott in his natural habitat. Oh, yes, we had him in his natural habitat today on the show. You can go and watch it. It's right below this show. And it was actually, it was nice to do a show during the day because now you don't have any light. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving things around, and uh, I, I don't have them all placed where they need to be. But now you're, oh, there, there well, now we're starting to get some light on you. Uh, uh, we're, yeah. yeah. And Jason yeah. called in today. Then Jason okay. called in for a second. But the thing was, what we had was we had Scott, and he was outside, you know. Uh, and that was cool. Uh, yeah. He was outside, and it was a beautiful day. And uh, he had a, you know, we were able to see what he looks like outside. So that was huh. that was cool. But, um, you know, anyway. Um, so how, how are you guys today? Uh, you put, put your other light on again. It's, you're too dark. All right, all right, You're all right. too dark, damn it. Uh, you can actually zoom in on your own camera? Or yeah. can you zoom in using Skype? Uh, oh, I'm, I got uh, uh, a zoom. Lord, Lord, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I got to move it. I got to move it. He's almost a perfect silhouette shot, so you might as well take the picture while he's got the light on him. Yeah, yeah. well, there, there's uh, there's no plug over where I need it. Well, and, the, and so you're rearranging well, well, your... He must be rearranging his studio yeah, again. Yeah, he's trying to rearrange it's, his lighting. Because his camera well, isn't... Most people are just the, happy. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm just... Uh, I moved the desk. I have more room, and I want to be able to set up the green screen. Now I'll oh, be able Jesus. To, we don't uh, want you to say the minute you I use that green screen, I'm turn I'm I'm hanging up on you. How's Come that? On. I want to see if well, it's I, I, I might have Trump in the background or something. I gotta crawl under the desk and plug this in. Oh, this is this is getting pathetic. <laughs> this is you getting do pathetic. Like a Godzilla trying to eat us like yeah. they do on yeah. um Mystery Science three thousand. Yeah. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. Hey yeah. Rob, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, Hello. good. Need your camera so we can see you. Nice tie, by the way. Well, he looks good. He dresses up well. You oh, know. he cleans up he nicely. Cl cleans, up, cleans up nicely, I think, is the term. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? I don't see any ties. Well, no, your oh, picture, your still picture. Oh, 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 oh. Skype still. Yeah, you've got it. Well, and Phil's here, but he's on all fours. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, he, he, he's got this, you know, he's got this idea that because he's doing this, he has to have the lighting right. He has to have a green screen. Where's well, the green screen? I, I haven't set it up yet. I installed the software. Now I have to set it up. Yeah, and then you're going to be fud fud fucking with it and fudging with it and yes. tr trying to get rid of the fringe and stuff like that. And so well, the minute you go to green screen, I'm hanging up on you. Well, I know how to go to. I know how to get rid of the fuzz because you got to light the green screen enough to get separation. No, you don't. Only if it's a bad green screen. Well, I'm uh, sure it's a bad green screen. It was forty bucks yeah. or so at uh, Adorama. Brian's in his car right now. That's why. Yeah, that's why it says uh, uh, some people uh, need to come up, uh, come online, or update uh, Skype before they can call you, and uh, that means that Brian's. 
out there on a on his phone in the car, right, Brian? That is correct. I'm actually in the work vehicle because I, it, was, it was a late day, but I'm headed back to the terminal to head yeah. back home. Oh, hey. But I'm, a, I'm still a ways away, so. And we've just been joined by Bree, who is in Germany. Hello, Bree. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, uh, yeah. It, 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 you can't see this, but Phil is like trying to set up everything and make things oh. work. It, it, just it's not keep, just set up. don't do it. You look fine. It looks yeah. fine. You have yeah. a nice Somebody. shadow on one side of your face. It's got a nice <laughs> film noir look to it. Just yeah. leave it. Okay. Yeah, that one. Boy. Uh, yeah, the, uh, moving things, uh, and all of a sudden, nothing got disconnected, but several things didn't work as soon as I moved the desk. Uh, it was not easy. Yeah, one of these is as you get going by by having a studio and, and uh, what is that noise? I don't know. Uh, 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 as you as you have a, a, stu a studio and and Rob can attest to this, you first you put it all together and you say I'm going to make all the wires really, you know, neat and everything, right? And by the time you install the whole thing. It's just a tangle of wires, no matter how hard you try. Right, Rob? Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's I, really I said, tough. I was reading something. An, what? I was just going to say, setting up an entertainment center as uh, gaming systems. If you're a retro gamer if you're an, a, a gameaholic like myself. Yeah. And with other electronic devices, I can attest to, to, to the tru truth of that as well. Yeah. It, 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 you can't do it. And uh, I guess life won't be wonderful till everything is non-wired. Yeah. yeah. But see, that but, means but, it's all hackable. But, but then, no. That, no. it might give you cancer in the ass or something. You know? It could do that, but there's also one other problem with it. Whenever we did, and I think Rob can attest this because he's done television, I vastly preferred to be wired than wireless, especially yeah. when we were out in the field, because wireless always you you got noise or whatever with with it with hard wiring a microphone to yourself you're cool Activity issues am i right rob yeah it's rarely done though i mean most everything today is wireless even um, today i haven't been in television in 20 years and even then every place i ever worked really uh was all wireless i mean and you if you worried you 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 had the double mic so that yeah. you can you yeah. know, and batteries change before every broadcast. Right, right. Yeah, I uh, in my old house, uh, I had a ceiling system set up so that all the wires were off the floor, and it was for my strobes. And uh, and uh, you know, so I, could, I they were on uh, things that went up and down, pentaflexes, and uh, I had this. Uh, these members up on the ceiling, and you could slide them anywhere you wanted. Now you're losing everybody in the audience, but. Oh. I tell you, I went to, uh, we went to see this Broadway show the other night, uh -huh. and and uh huh. Tell us what you went to. See. Oh, we went, I went to see Beautiful, the Carol King musical. Oh, I've heard that's good. Ah, uh, it sucks. Anyway, <laughs> but don't tell Bobby Slayton that because he bought tickets for us and uh, he loves the show and he thinks it's the best show ever. I think it was just the, it was the worst Broadway show I've ever seen. OK, because it, it's a bridge and tunnel show. By that, I mean, when you say bridge and tunnel show, it's made for the bridge and tunnel crowd. It's meant for tourists. It's meant for people coming in from New Jersey, it's, you know, people coming in from Queens. It, it, but it was, you know, it, no original music, of course. So it, it, they save money that way. And then the, the script was just just horrible. And a couple of the actors were pathetic. Uh, they could sing, but they couldn't act, you know. Uh, and uh, But anyway, that isn't the point I was going to make. So we're in the front row. Bobby, big spender, buys front row seats, right? Very nice of him. Very nice of him, and I thank him. It was a very nice night at the theater, okay? We didn't fall asleep or anything because this thing was so bad it was fun to watch. You know, because I'm looking over a girlfriend every now and then going, eh, and we're both, we both, both trying to stifle laughing. But anyway, we're right in the front row. And I noticed something that is a new thing they're doing on Broadway. They've been doing it for a couple of years, but because I usually sit back in the cheap seats, you can't see them. 
is how they mic the uh, actors, the singers in the show. How do you think they mic them? Uh, something that goes around to the nope. front? Nope. My, on Broadway? I didn't know they mic anybody on Broadway. They mic everybody on Broadway. Everybody in the cast is mic'd. Except for maybe dancers, and then they don't have to mic them because they don't, you know. But if they sing, they got to mic them. I didn't know that. How do you um, think they mic them? I, I, I saw I, the microphone. No booms. Huh? No boom. Right? No. Let me, let me, let me t change cameras here so the audience can see what I'm about to say. It's a microphone right here. No. Yes. They let them run around with shit on their head? It, it doesn't move. It is, it is adhered to their head right here. And then I could see the wire went down here. Okay. Looks like Bender. And because if you're like, if you're five rows back, you, you don't see it. And one of the reasons why they do it that way, why do you think they do it? Uh, let's. Uh, they're all bald? No. Not the, How do you get it to stick if they have hair? On the forehead. Oh. Right here. Like, I, I thought they were all from India. It's a lavalier mic? It's it's a lavalier style mic, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but why do you think they do it that way? I, I a oh, girlfriend fuck. told me because she found out a long time ago. You would think that they just stick it on the collar or no, something. No, if, if if you wire yeah, somebody yeah, here, it's got a better clothes is going to make noise. That's right, that's right. There, it there's no noise to be had if it's stuck there so that it's solid, and it comes down here. There is nothing that is going to, unless somebody puts on a hat, I guess, and, you know. But that's uh, that's what uh, that's what they uh, what they did, you know. Well, I think it's it's high time you wired yourself that way. That that's the way you mic up, you know. Well, I I do have lavaliers here. I could use the lavalier and just dangle it over my head, I suppose. But oh, and and the reason you, I stopped using the lavalier was because of how much it rubbed against my clothing. Mm. You know, um, and uh, so anyway, ah, God, I feel all of a sudden woozy and tired. Can we ask Bree how how his part of the planet is was adapting last week to our big orange turd being over on his side? Yeah, how, how was it having the orange turd over there, Bree? Um, well, Bree is in Bree is in uh, in uh, Dubai. Dubai. And so yeah. he was, I guess he was close by. I guess Saudi Arabia is nearby, right? Well, it's, yeah. It's in All the neighborhood. In the we are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What was the reaction to him? Um, I don't know. You know, it, uh, it's hard to say. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, I, uh, I'm just waking up here, so my brain is getting in gear. Uh, and I, by the way, I, I was saying that I, I knew the kind of mics they used, but uh, so I think I had hit my mute button at that point or uh -oh. something. Now, am I uh, right why they use that mic, that kind of mic? Yeah, I mean, I know what kind of, I can't see you, Yeah. but I know what kind it is, um, you know, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but back to the, the Trump thing. Well, um, it, he... Uh, he said a lot of the things that, uh, you know, that they wanted to hear, and um, of course, you know, and I, I think that that's uh, it. You know, right now the the uh, all the talk is sort of the the positioning between Saudi Arabia and Iran, you know, and, uh, and sort of they want uh, to get everybody into uh, alignment you know, on one side or the other. And so that's sort of, you know, what's what's happening now. Well, who, who wants to get who into alignment? The United States wants to get the Saudis into alignment? No, so, uh, Saudi Arabia wants to sort of get their ducks in line. Uh-huh. And, and they see it, they see Iran as the major player, and that's why, you know, why the, you know, Trump is sort of, you know, on, on board with Let that as well. Let me ask you this. As someone in the, the mi Middle East right now, what is the perception of Iran by the Middle East, not by America, not by other people, but by the people in the Middle East? Is it that they are definitely a danger or that the danger is maybe overstated? 
it depends on which country you're in. Yeah. You know, it depends on that. Um, and, uh, you know, each country has a different history or relationship yeah. uh, with, with that situation. So it depends on, you know, who, who you ask. And even within a particular country, it can, that answer could vary. Yeah. But in, for instance, in Dubai, what is the attitude about Iran? Um, you mean among the people? Well, I'd say that and the and the and the system itself. You know, the leaders. The, <clears throat> the, the, the it's a difficult situation. Um, oh, okay. Among the citizenry and among the people, you have to understand that there are many Iranians who live here. Mm -hmm. um, I work with Iranians. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. We're kind of a melting, well, not a melting pot. That's not the right metaphor. Yeah. We're more like a tapestry. I don't know, mosaic. Uh, so, you know, so from from that perspective, there are many who uh, I work with. Yeah. Um, you know, but from the government side, uh, they, you know, they're they're going to tend to. Oh, what is that noise? Why? That was me, probably. Oh, yeah. I was just. Uh, 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 Okay. Yeah. Anyway, keep going. Uh, uh, yeah. So from the government side of things, mm -hmm. they tend to, uh, you know, be in alignment with, with Saudi. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so the, the official line would be that, uh, you know, that they, they definitely support uh, the Saudi uh, position. Mm -hmm. And they want, they, they see Iran as being kind of a you know meddles, meddlesome troublemaker in a lot of different areas and there's uh you know there's certainly evidence for that mm -hmm. um you know is, so, does it have something to do with business though as well you know that yeah. that they that they you know they do business with Saudi Arabia they probably have more of a, com a commercial relationship with Saudi Arabia than they do with uh with Iran um, I, you know, that's a good question. I, I would assume that that's true. But at the same time, there are so many Iranian merchants and businesses here, um, and restaurants and, you know, so it's really hard to say, I think, I think it's one of those things where, you know, like culturally, the, you know, there's a, there's an appreciation for the Persian culture and, and history and, and, and all of that. But I think then if you look at the governmental side, there is a there is a slight, you know, there are slight misgivings with, you know, what's been happening in, in more recent modern histories. And there's a desire uh, to just sort of say, hey, to the Iranian government, just uh, stop doing all the stuff you're doing. You know, we've Phil, seen this a lot. Yeah. Phil has his hand up. Phil, I want to ask uh, Bri a question. Uh, during the uh, U.S. Um, uh, sanctions against Iran, uh, they didn't want any other country to trade with Iran. Uh, but Dubai is uh, pretty much an ally of the United States. Did 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 that? Did Dubai actually follow those sanctions and and uh, stop trade with Iran, or did that uh, just get swept under the rug and they continue to trade? Well. I'm I'm not in a good position to answer that. Um, however, I will tell you that if you look at uh, if we could just switch it over to North Korea for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I was living in Singapore during that time, mm -hmm. and I can tell you that trading still occurs. Um, I, I you know for example, um, there are Iranian banks here. They they have. I mean, if you walk down the street, you'll see Bank of Iran or whatever. So it would seem kind of odd if you say, well, because these sanctions don't cover everything. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, like, for example, I think the Chinese needed for a long time. They had trade with uh, North Korea to get their coal or something. So, like, even when there were all these major sanctions, the coal was still coming across. And it was only recently that we heard you know, that they had rejected some, China had rejected some coal shipments or something. So the thing you have to realize is sanctions don't cover everything. It's not like it's a 100% blackout. Yeah. So, 
So if they so let's say that they it's seventy percent. Well, that thirty percent is still viable, and there's still businesses running around that, and so that's what they do. Um, the other thing you have to realize is, if you look at North Korea, they set up businesses in Malaysia that appear to be Malaysian. We learned that, um, you know, after the the uh, assassination of the leader, the leader's half brother, then we you know we learned some of these connections there. So some we're aware of. And some we are not. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it would appear to me, though, that Dubai is the kind of country that would rather accept commerce and commercial business from anybody. I mean, they're in the business of doing business. Am I not right about that, Bree? I mean, that they would yeah. they would do business with Iran if there was business to be had because they just want to do business with anybody. Yeah. But, yeah. The, yeah. I mean... Yeah, George, we're the hub. Bush. George Bush was going to contract with Dubai to run our major ports. And I guess there was a big stink in this country that they didn't want that to happen. But he was he was contracting with a private company out of Dubai to uh, to run the U.S. ports. And, yeah, uh, but this, yeah. Not until you get – until and Bree, do you guys have this over there? All of the shipping containers that come into United States ports – we really, A, we check a small amount of them, and B, the easiest thing to do is put some RFID tracking tags on every container so that we know what's in each container, and we don't do that. So to have somebody else be another country running our shipping, our, our, our harbors, it's it would be ridiculous until we can get until we can track the containers, until we can know how many there are, and until we can know what's in them. It's a big deal. That was one of yeah. the reasons we put it. Um, well, first, uh, I, if I were choosing someone, I would probably choose the Singaporeans uh, to do the port stuff. Um, you know, that, that would probably be my first choice. But my second choice probably would be Dubai. Um, my experience, I've been out in the world. I don't know how much all of you guys are traveling around and stuff. But Singapore and Dubai, um, and maybe you could say Hong Kong, uh, they're pretty much leaving the rest of the world in the dust. When I go to when I travel to other cities, I just think, wow, how backwards is this place? <laughs> I even come back to the states now, and it's just like, oh my gosh, we we are just so backwards. That's what you Trump know, said. You know, that's what yeah. he said about our airports. We, and we are. We yeah. haven't. We haven't. Give us the money for the maglev trains. Give us the money for the speed rail trains going down the east coast. Give us that freaking money, and we will put it in. But you won't give us the goddamn money. You just they, keep giving tax cuts. They voted it. Uh, they voted it in in California, but it, it'll never happen. Uh, there was uh, federal matching funds for the high speed train, but they want to build it in the middle of nowhere. It's going to go to. It's going to go to um, Bakersfield. No, yeah. it has to start in Bakersfield. Nobody goes to Bakersfield. And they had to start it in Bakersfield because they wanted the federal funding, and the federal funding had to be done within X amount of time period. So the only place that they could build it within that time period in order to get the matching funds was Bakersfield. Okay, well, and that's well, why yeah, it started being a, a very blue state uh, can't seem to get it done. How, how are you going to get it done anywhere else? But see, that's kind of the question. I, it's not a state or a providence thing over in Japan. Those trains run through everything, and we don't. Le they don't leave it up to the states. They say Japan wants to have the best rail system on the planet, and they go out and do it. We say we want the best rail system well, on the here, planet. Here, it, it, Renee, later, Renee so it, 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 unfortunately, it's our system. Uh, it, we, in China, they want to. They 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 built a uh, high speed rail from uh, from Beijing to Shanghai, right? Mm -hmm. and, or, or to Hong was it Hong Kong or Shanghai? I think it was Shanghai. Shanghai. Yeah, Shanghai. Yeah, Shanghai. And they also have one from and, the Shanghai and, Airport. And they got that thing. Shanghai. They got that thing built in record time. I mean, f four or five years. That was it. That, you know, it was done. Because the people, the, the the government there doesn't right vote now, on it. They don't. Alex, right now they're building from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore. They're wow. building the train, and here so, in Dubai, we're we're uh, we just are starting to build the prototype for the Hyperloop yeah. to go from. But Dubai how many to people have to okay that to get it done? 
way less than well here we just argue about it until the cost of it is double what it was when we started talking about it but that brings us back to the phil thing phil wants everything run at the state level if we wanted to be if we didn't want to be this what are we so we're there are some things renee that can't run if it's interstate, it can't be run at the state level. It's got to be run at the federal level. Well, the highways are, are yeah, you're ta- federal, you argue no, that the highways, wait a minute, you argue that the highways no, should you be. Did. I didn't say that. Yeah, you, 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 you came up with some scenario that, well, if it goes from one state and that state doesn't have uh, good service and you're going to have narrow roads, you're going to have this, that, and anything. No, there, there's uniformity and there, and with an interstate highway, uh, it, that is something that's handled by the federal yes, government. Tony. Can I have a question for Phil? I can blow his whole theory right out of the way. Phil, the post office, how is that working? The you what? You get mail every day in uh, business? Huh? So, but we yes. just... Well, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So wait a minute. He's, he's got to ask questions. Open. Because the mail goes across state lines. So then why can't? So that answers the question right there. Well, it means that there are some things that should be run by the federal government and some things that shouldn't. And, and these train systems that they have in Asia and that they're getting in Europe are you know we got we got off system. of the we got off the main discussion which yeah. was Trains. why these things don't get built so fast and they do get built very fast in China China uh, recently said that they want all cities of uh, 500,000 people or more to have direct fast rail to these cities uh, if we did that, if we did that in the United States, the kind of commerce that it would give cities that are now not in the in the loop, and I'm, you know, one of the reasons Detroit is failing is because it's not in the loop. No, nope, I you agree. Know, Chicago is barely in the loop. Cleveland isn't in the loop. San Francisco isn't in the loop. The loop is basically New York, Los Angeles, uh, and uh, uh, maybe Chicago, but. The point is, if you had high-speed rail going to, like, every city of 500,000 or more, the kind of business, because this would become like a blood in a vein, that would go to those cities would increase exponentially. But we don't do it. Rail, we don't but do we've it. But we Amtrak, and Amtrak is a Am- federal... Amtrak is, bu- uh, Amtrak is bullshit. I've never... Uh, I, I, I was told, oh, boy, Amtrak. So we took Amtrak to, uh, to uh, Boston, okay? Oh. It was like crawling to Boston. Oh, so I you know, the tracks. It's not the it's, train. It's the tracks. It's no, the tracks. They, they put in the trains. They just didn't put in the tracks that were capable right. of it. And the fact is, I've been on just older, older trains in Europe and gone through France at 110 miles an hour. Is yeah. Alex the Acela train to Washington? Is that fast? No. It could be. It the does. Train, it it does. Be. On one leg, supposedly, it can go fast. Yeah, but, you know, do we have places that we can put those kinds of tracks in and still get to these hubs? Yeah, you do. And then that brings up a whole other issue. If we you were talking about jobs in, in, in smaller areas, uh, let's say 500,000 are, are in that vicinity. If you're running fast rail systems to those to those cities, people no longer want to live in the city. They want to live in those smaller 500 or below towns so that they can do their manufacturing or their farming or whatever and then put it on the train and send it directly to those cities. But we don't do that but stuff that you manufacture you don't have to send that fast uh you know uh for instance if i get a uh that's not the point we're making here (laughs) phil the point is that if you have it's like it's like a bloodstream yeah, and, 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 and it's people that, travel more. that yes, people would travel there. There would be people in New York, for instance, if you had a high speed rail to say Cleveland, would go to Cleveland to do business. Right now, they go, it's too far. I don't want to do business that far. You know, I, if, it's if faster for me to go to. It's faster for me to go to San Francisco. If the airlines keep beating you up and dragging you off the plane, maybe people will want to take the train. It's expensive to the airline. No, nobody the, uh, nobody wants to take the train. Expensive. It's too slow. It, if you had a high-speed rail going between here and Cleveland, how far is Cleveland? What? Uh, 150? 800 miles? No, maybe? no, it's not that far. It's like 150? No, it's not that far. Okay. 150 maybe? 200? No, it's got to be no, further. No, it's more than that. Is it, is it more New than that? New York to Cleveland? Yeah. Five miles. 
Yeah. Uh, okay, if you had a train that w that went 200 miles an hour, which most of these maglev trains are very capable of doing, you'd be there in two two and a half hours. Right. You know, and you and could so do your business, turn lovely. around, and come back home, and be home for dinner. Absolutely. Or you could stay for a weekend, see a game or something. And that too. And let's let's go to one more point here because uh, Bree brought this up a couple of weeks ago, the last time he was on, and nobody seemed to have it didn't register in anybody's mind. We subsidize smaller airports, and right now there's a hundred there's a hundred and fifty seven smaller airports that are on the chopping block because of what Trump is doing. And that the people who live in those smaller areas, and we're talking about 40,000 or 100,000 people in a particular area, they're not going to have a, a subsidized service. That means the United Express and the rest of them aren't going to go in there. So what's going to happen is those airports are going to close up. And what was feeding you into the bigger cities isn't airplanes anymore. And we don't have that much rail or the rail isn't that good anymore. That means if you want to fly out of Denver and you live in Grand Junction, your only hope is to drive. So the United States government is changing the United States. Uh, we're going to get rid of airports. And a lot of you people don't care that those little airports are going to go away. But those airports are jobs. 465 miles from New York to Cleveland driving 405 as the crow flies to where 405 from cleveland uh, cleveland to new york city yeah well i mean you could you could do that in two hours on a maglev train you know yeah. and and people would be then be doing business in cleveland they'd be doing more business in some of these smaller towns if they mm -hmm. if they only had the the ability to get there in in a decent amount of time the only other way to get there that fast is by taking an airplane and believe me you would rather if you had a maglev train, you'd rather take the train than the plane because you got to get out to the airport. You yeah. got to check in early. Let's say the flight to to to. I think I did. Uh, I think I did Cleveland once. It took me an hour and fifteen minutes or something like that. But with everything put together, it took me close to five or six hours to get there. I'd rather drive to L.A. from San Francisco than fly. Yeah, of course. Because you, know, you got your yeah. stuff, you got your car. It's going to take you five, five and a half hours on Highway 5. Yeah, it's boring. But by the time you get to the airport and do all of those things, it's almost five hours. And you stop off and get some Anderson's pea soup. Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, Renee. Um, Ree, did you say you have a, a, a tube system going in somewhere over there? Yeah, the Hyperloop. They're st they broke ground and they're they're building it now. From where to where? Uh, from Dubai to Abu Dhabi. Is that that wow. Elon Musk thing? Like yeah. Yep. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, they broke okay, the ground. Okay, so the thing is, the technology is technology has been around for at least fifty years. Well, wait, years. what is the, what is the technology in particular that we're talking the, about here? The Hyperloop. Yeah. Yeah, this is um, frictionless. Uh, transportation you mm -hmm. you are you're kind of like a hockey a air hockey puck mm -hmm. but you're in a tube yeah and that doesn't you know doesn't uh, I think it's a vacuum tube or something and then you know the the air or the wind pushes you mm -hmm. uh, you know and you, I, just, I, I, and you say Elon Musk has something to do with this yeah Elon Musk yeah. is bringing this to San Francisco to Los Angeles is his version of this so that we no longer have to be reliant on those shitty airlines going that take just like Phil said five or six hours to, for an hour flight. But yeah. Dubai, but you guys are already doing this. You you've already yep. broken down for this. Yes. When is it yeah, going to be started. started? We if 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 it is uh, you know something that somebody has imagined or is innovative mm -hmm. it's here in some way shape or form we have we have the driverless cars and buses we have the flying car we have the you know anything that is whatever is being thought of or even before that yeah uh, it's here wow. and that's they always want to be you know on the on the forefront of whatever happens to be happening. I would be By happy way, with the maglev yeah. train. I, I like the maglevs. I'd be happy with the maglev Dubai to Abu Dhabi, but they're doing the Hyperloop. I, I want the flying I, car. I, by the way, I want to say hello to Jeff. Jeff, quit playing with the microphone. It's making noise. I know. I'm trying to get this thing to work great. No, it's working fine. You sound great. 
I, I, and you look great too. I, I, I was worried about Jeff because Jeff usually calls every night, and a, lot, a couple of nights last week he didn't. And uh, we'll get to why in a little bit. You can tell your your story about oh. being being the electrically charged man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway. Uh, it, it, we are just not very progressive in this country, and and part of that has to do with. I mean, it's the reason why we've lost jobs is because technologically we just are not. Even when we do something technologically, we send it somewhere else to get built. You know, so um, nobody wants to spend money anymore. We used to we used to lead, and leading costs money. Now all we want to do is cut, 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 cut. Yeah. So, Phil, what is it going to take for California to actually build a, a better transportation, a better mass trans, transit system from San Francisco to Los Angeles? What is it that the Republicans want to get that taken care of? Republicans have nothing to do with it. They couldn't even get elected as a dog catcher in California because uh, it's it's totally run by the Democrats. But on and, the other and hand, there's a better breed. I, and by the way, there's a better breed of dog catcher in California. So I don't I don't see anyone getting out of their cars. Uh, I don't think that the uh, uh, that the mentality is there uh, for Californians to get out of their cars. And uh, therefore, if you you got to get them to vote for this stuff and they don't they don't they don't want to give up their car. They, they don't want to give up their uh, their ability to go where they want when they want. And uh, so I don't see it getting done in California. Well, now, don't you think well, wait, a minute, wait a minute, Jeff. Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. I think it'll take a long time. It's through California. What, now, what? Where, where, where's that noise coming from? Oh. Brian, I'm I think muted. that's I think that's you, Brian. Uh, is, yeah. it, is it gone yet? Uh, no, no. Wow. no. And you're, you're you're too loud, and it's. But don't you think no, okay. forty or fifty years is or forty years is long enough? Haven't haven't we known about that technology? Well, wait a minute. Let me, Jeff was going to say something though. Yeah, I think the the biggest change is that's going to happen is when we have automated cars, where you don't drive it, but the car drives you. And in addition to that, instead of having a car that you own, you just Pick one up when you need it, wherever they are. And I think Yeah, that, we have that here. Yeah, I mean, those kind of things are, are common in the cities and things like that. In New York, there's plenty of those. Um, yeah, but, and if, if you look over in, um, in China as well, right now, there's the big thing is this bike sharing issue. Uh, now, we have bike sharing here in Dubai and many other cities, but you have to always put it back at it like a docking station well that's what right. we have it here in new york it's called city bike. but now but now in china you do not have to you can leave it anywhere you, you can take it anywhere leave it anywhere you don't have to go back to a, a docking station there are some six companies that are uh competing in shanghai and beijing for example with this newer model and what is um that, uh, that an app that tells you where it is yeah and yeah uh, we have we have that kind of here in new york this thing called city bike and it's racks and racks of these bikes, and you uh, use your credit card to get the bike, and then you use the bike, and you go around New York, and then there are any one of a number of other places where you can just simply leave it off. Yeah, you have, but that requires, it's the same here in Dubai, it requires you to find the other location. It may or may not be convenient for you. And in China, you just leave it wherever. Now, we're doing the same thing. They do the same thing in Vienna and um, with cars. Uh, in Vienna and here in Dubai. So I can walk up to a car and tap my phone on it and I can take it for an hour and then just leave it. And it's called U Drive. So we have, and they have that in Vienna. They're using the little smart cars. Here we have regular sized cars. Yeah. Uh, I can do that too. I got a little uh, uh, a stick that I stick down between the window and the door and I can unlock the car, get in it, drive it. After really? I run out of gas, I leave it and then get another one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I take it a step further. Uh, I, 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 I'm guessing the, uh, co- the conversation is centered around transportation. Yeah. But as far as move your, uh, move your mic, mo- move your mic a little bit away from your mouth, Brian, because we, we, it's, how's that? Yeah, that's better. Good. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Uh, anyway, uh, as far as revolutionizing the uh, 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 cons- 
consumer goods and consumer experience. Uh, uh, 3D printing, I think, is going to change uh, manufacturing and the industrial uh, and industrialization, much as the industrial revolution changed. Uh, 3D printing saved me four thousand bucks the other day. Because you know, it, as it gets more and more advanced. You know, uh, and already I've seen in, in, in magazines and whatnot, people have 3D printed cars, entire vehicles. Yeah. But wait, wait, no, wait a minute. Why, why, why Phil, did 3D printing save your life or save you $400 or $4,000? $4,000. $4, why? Uh, I, I, have this big, I have this big cutting machine uh, at the store. It weighs 8,000 pounds, and it's got a little uh, measuring device in it. So when you put the carpet on it, it unrolls it, measures it, and so forth. So... There, uh, but it's uh, an older machine, and uh, the nylon uh, little part that ran the counter uh, cracked in half. So I wasn't able to zero it uh, anymore, and uh, therefore it didn't work as a measuring thing. And I had an eight thousand pound uh, boat anchor. Uh, so I said to the guy who fixes or maintains my machine, I said, just take the part. Get a hold of a 3D printing place and have them make you a new part because the machine was made in the 70s and it's obsolete. You can't get any parts right. for it. Right. So a new measuring device, yeah. I would have to fly a guy out from Dallas, Texas, yeah. and have him install a thing for four grand so oh. it, would, it would measure. So for $150, I got the part uh, from a 3D printer. They put it in. Works fine. And how much so, did it cost you to uh, do? 150 bucks. 150 bucks. Hello, Tim. Good evening. Welcome. Um, and it was my that, That's how they get parts up to the space station, isn't it? Print yes. them? Yeah, they, they need yeah. a part. They scan the, the real one on, on Earth, and it prints it on the space station. Wow. Oddly enough, I first heard of 3D printing technology on your Sirius XM uh, show, Alex, when you were discussing it with Christina and one other person I can't recall. Yeah. And then when I when I heard that as I as I was driving on my way home, because I was driving a school bus at the time, I uh, went on I went onto my computer and I looked it up further on YouTube, and uh, you know that's what they had as a topic. You know, you you can buy you can buy wrenches for the space station. Yeah, yeah, but you, you bucks, can right? buy you can buy um, uh, uh, 3D printers on Amazon. There are yeah. a lot yeah. of them available now. Yeah, Adorama sells uh, one also. Yeah. Uh, they're not the biggest one in the world, but you, you know you don't really need it to be that big. Yeah. Wait a second. Didn't one of wasn't one of our Facebook friends just showed us a robotic arm that they 3D printed? That was me. Or is it just? Oh, see. Ask him. He's an instructor. Or he's. What did you say you were? A teacher. <laughs> Tell us what you did. Master <laughs> mentor. Um, I worked on a project in high school here in Connecticut, uh, in Norwalk, and the students were working on a project where they were using a 3D printer and they developed a implant that would allow a, a child who otherwise could not move his hand up and down. They build a frame, it goes over there, it's all 3D printed, and by moving, moving the device by the back of them, mm -hmm. they had some rubber bands kind of thing, and it would automatically, by moving it, it would open and close the fingers, wow. which was pretty fantastic. And they've done it, for a six-year-old child, and um, and it's pretty uh, sophisticated it's pretty, thing. It's pretty cool. And of course, they're doing it for relatively nothing. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you listen to somebody like Mike Pence. You know, all you have to do is pray for that child to get better and uh, oh, fuck the three D printing, fuck the science. You know, that goes behind three D printing and other medical advancements and whatnot. And you know, prayer just works fine. Sure. Yeah, prayer uh, is uh, amazing that a, that a high school, a couple of high school kids could do that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I, I want Pence to become president because everything will be solved by praying. Yeah. Works for me. I'll pray for him to get yeah. it. I'll pray for him to Excuse get it. Excuse me, I'm, I'm oh, I, though, uh, but I'm spelling it P. It's going to be the beginning of the yeah. new dark ages because yeah, yeah. they're laying off all the scientists. No, but I'm 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 spelling it P R E Y. 
So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. And you know what? I, you know, I, I was reading for that. that a lot of the science, some of the scientists are moving their families to Australia. Really? Yeah, well, you know, let me ask let me let the, me ask Bree about something stuff. here because this is something I brought up a couple of nights ago, and I keep bringing it up, and that is that Americans don't understand that the, the it's a world economy now, and if you want a job, there are jobs all over the world, and that you have to simply be ready and willing to go to them and to find them. Am I right, right. Bree? Because you're one of those people who hasn't worked in the United States for years. That's absolutely right, Alex. Um, the basically, you know, what we, I don't, I don't know that you know everybody can wrap their heads around this just yet, but it's, and I mean, I, I know uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Renee's, uh, you know, favorite, uh, <laughs> is. Uh, he gave a speech at Harvard and he, you know, he's, he kind of said it in, I mean, he said a lot of things, but one of the things he said was, um, that, uh, it, it's about ideas mm -hmm. that the future is about ideas, not really about nations. So I think he sees it and he gets it. Um, and for those of us who have worked or work abroad, it's basically, uh, I think there are certain places where they're creating environments where the top people will want to go. And, that's that's sort of the key. Now, the U.S., we kind of we've been that for many, many, many years for a lot of people around the world. But that's no longer the case. And or at least it's changing. And so you you see certain centers in different parts of the world where they're attracting the top talent. And there are a lot of advantages to these places um, you know, and I, and I, I don't have, there's not enough time to list all of them, but the, these centers are sort of becoming global hubs and they're, and they're putting together. There, it's there, kind of like there was one I'll, town. I'll, there there I was. Just say, well, yeah, go ahead. I'll give, you, I'll give you one example. Yeah, it's it, imagine the world as like um, and cities like baseball teams, mm -hmm. you know. So when you have the New York Yankees, uh, they're not the, the players on the New York Yankees are not all from New York. They come from all over the place, right? Yeah. So, so this is, this is essentially what's happening in other businesses, but it's happening in other cities in other parts of the world. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. But what I'm saying is, is that people, you know, uh, uh, Trump always talks about, oh, we're going to bring jobs back to back to the United States. I got news for you, Donald. No, you're not. You know, uh, the, the the jobs have gone elsewhere, and that's where people should be going to get them. Uh, it, it, what we need to do is perhaps start creating a new American economy and new jobs with new technologies and whatever, but we don't seem to be doing it because we are losing our good people to other countries. Yeah, we want coal. It's we want coal. Edge. That is so cutting retrograde. Edge. You know, I, I would rather they took the coal miners and taught them how to do something practical. How about that? You know? that yeah, what he's doing is he he is he is he is giving them false hope that only places them in a dwindling economy. Right. No, no, no. Like he he's hasn't not, done that before, right? Yeah. He's, he's not giving them false hope. He's <clears throat> just blatantly lying to them. Carnival Barker, step right up. It's because he is uh, is lessening the uh, environmental issues that dealt I'll with. But that is not going to get them their jobs back because people backwards. aren't using coal anymore, Phil. Uh, backward thinking. There's still plenty. Phil. It's still backward plenty thinking. It's well, just Bree, Bree just said the Chinese are using it. We could sell it to them instead of the North Koreans. What? You know? Coal. Coal? Yeah. They're, they're trying yeah, to get away from coal. Really they're trying to get away from anything that pollutes the atmosphere. That. Listen to Bree. The, we, we have been doing that. We're doing that. Yeah, we're, we're selling coal to China instead of the North Koreans. Yeah. That's right. Yep. But it doesn't make it, it... Look, there's not one answer to anything. There's not one answer to the United States mass transit problem. There's not one answer for for our energy issues. But the uh, the will or the lack of willingness on the part of most of these Americans to to educate themselves just drives us backwards over and over again. And this technology isn't new. It we should have embraced it like 30 years ago, but we refuse to. 
I worked in countries. Additionally, I read and uh, I understand that I've understood that, uh, and Bree can correct me if I'm wrong about this, that uh, China has been grappling with the notion that their uh, air quality is comparable to that of my hometown of Pittsburgh's 60, well, I'm sorry, 100 years ago. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Ago. It's horrible. Mm. And and uh, uh, that's why I can't believe that they're trying to go to uh, keep going to coal because uh, maybe in the outlying areas where they haven't gotten modern enough, but in Beijing, they would like to just do away with any kind of fossil fuel burning. Renee? I thought they said that, I thought they said they weren't going to build any more coal power plants. I, I, they, I prob- that too. they probably aren't because I mean they can too because they're pretty much a dictatorship. I mean they're communists, but uh, you don't know. Oh no! Well, what I said the great says, the, your, the great thing about China is you want a high speed rail to Shanghai, build it, and I want it ready in five years. It gets done. Yeah, you know because there's you know because there's only one there's only one guy that has to make that decision. Okay. Yeah, but that, that, that's what we. The, that's what we don't that's want. What we, we, yeah, that's what we don't want, right? We don't want a dictator or somebody to make a decision. You know, they make some good ones, but they make some bad ones hey, too. Hey, let me let me ask you a question. Here's an int- Oh, yes, first Jeff. Jeff, yes. Um, I remember a guy named JFK, who said, <laughs> "You know what? We ought to go to the moon." And he employed thousands and thousands for years and years and not only because of that they developed all kinds of products that came from yeah, that but how many years research. was it how many years was it from the time he said we're going to go to the moon and the time we went to moon? i thought it was 10 years uh, maybe it was 10 years that's pretty phenomenal that's pretty True. phenomenal but we've been resting on that laurel for a while yeah yeah well, but but that, but that proves it can be metaphor. done that's, a big one. that's what we did do well, Sputnik was 59. Could right? do it again. Really went to the moon. Yeah. Sputnik was 59. I don't know. Uh, so I don't, was Sputnik 59 or was it 57? Well, then it might have been about 61 that Kennedy said that, and then we went to the moon in 69. Yeah. So it was about nine years, nine, ten years. So. But see, now let's talk about this. Our problems now, with space travel now, isn't that it's getting more difficult to do? It's just the math that and the science that needs to be done in order for us to do like space travel or better space travel is we're just at the cusp of it. We're not smart enough yet or we're just delving into it. So we're behind just by brain power and technology. But it was alone. Obama. It was Obama that uh, <laughs> stopped the funding to NASA and said that it should be done privately. I mean, right? it's being done privately, Phil. Yeah, yeah, because so wants to go to Mars. NASA's going to go to the sun now. That came out today. Yeah. yeah. We're going to yeah. learn a lot. We learn a lot by exploring. Well, but, we would have yeah. computers now. And Alex, <laughs> Alex wants to go to Cleveland. Uh, Trump, Trump, uh, Trump, uh, Trump, in fact, says he wants to put a man on the sun within the next 10 years. Oh, I vote for so. him. <laughs> that would be funny. Trump and Phil want to go to <laughs> hell. That's, uh, that's, Trump goes. that's where Trump, we want What he said, Alex, was he wanted to put a sun on the moon. A what? <laughs> He wanted to put a son-in-law on, on the moon. moon. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. I like that. Hey, Jackie, hey I got a call back for your microphone on the on the forehead. The what? A call well, back. You know who needs a microphone on the forehead? Who? Jared Kushner, because we don't know if he even talks. That's true. <laughs> There's a joke there hey, somewhere. Talk we'll... to anybody. Yeah. Well, well, we never see it, but you know, oh, that was another. Point apparently, he talks to the Russians. Yeah, he's got back <laughs> deals with them. He, yeah, he's funny. he's in debt quite a bit. He, he's he's carrying he's carrying their his his not his family because his family's really wealthy. I mean wealthy, Lepers. not rich. He's carrying a lot of debt. Is what I the last things I've read about him in the Financial Times. Well, a lot of times people who have uh, who who deal and we wheel and deal with money go through periods of being cash poor. You know. Uh, I, I don't How think I, I don't think there's probably been a billionaire that at one time or another hasn't gone belly up and then had to come back from that. But I often said that once you learn how to, it, it's an art. Once you learn how to make money, you keep making it. You know. So. Uh, so this arms deal that Jared uh, brokered last week, where mm-hmm. are those guns going to be made, and what are we making them for? 
I thought they were going to put Americans to work. So, uh, what wouldn't they be made here? Couldn't they? Because can anybody confirm what Phil just said? No, I can't. No. No. I didn't well, remember. Trump's intention, I think, was to. Uh, he says he's going to. Uh, it's going to create thousands of American jobs. Oh, here we go. Thousands of jobs. Okay. Yeah, thousands of American jobs. That's a lot of jobs, isn't it, Phil? Yeah. And Tony wait a minute. How many? How many people are unemployed? How many people are unemployed? <laughs> Uh, is it thousands? Is it just thousands? Are we going to get well, there as many unemployed now as there was uh, during the uh, recession? Oh, when would the you know, yeah, but most of those jobs were gained back during the Obama administration. He hates Obama bad. I don't know why. Yeah, but the the jobs that uh, were gained back were uh, greeter jobs at Walmart. Oh, oh now uh, you see now what? then then you've got to He's minimize it. Well, I don't up. see I don't see where Trump has has improved on that. And under the Bush administration, the uh, junior Bush administration, from what I understand, I don't know if it was the labor secretary at the time or whoever it was, they were wanting to count people who uh, work at places like uh, McDonald's and Wendy's and Burger King, you know, the actual putting together of the burgers and fries as, and lumping together with uh, manufacturing, you know, shining dog shit into diamonds. So, you know. I don't know how they count it. Well, they did, and it was under your boy's watch there, Philip. Who was yeah. George? George W. Bush wasn't a Democrat, was he? <laughs> yeah, he was. Ah, no. Compared to my man yeah, Trump. <laughs> compared to your man Trump. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what Trump is. Yeah, he was definitely a Democrat. A scourge. That's what Trump is. Well, you know, uh, uh, by the way, let, let's let's stop here for a second because I want to talk to Phil, uh, to Jeff. I was worried about Jeff because usually Jeff calls every night and he didn't call for a couple of nights. And I, I then went over to his Facebook page and I found out why. Why weren't you here a couple of days last <laughs> week, Jeff? There's a thing in my heart. It's called the it's called rhythmia. Okay? Yeah. Or arrhythmia. Everybody has. Right. A rhythm in their heart. Well, of course. Well, hopefully. A rhythm is when your heart goes out of rhythm, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I call it a flutter. Yeah. And, what do the uh, doctors call it? <laughs> yeah. They, both. A rhythm and, and flutter. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I had a little arrhythmia. And the solution yeah. is to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Make sure everything's okay. There's not any strokes and bad things going on. And yeah. Check your blood. Do this. And yeah. And a whole procedure. And but, everything was okay. Everything was about that was all everything right. Everything was good. Just, they stick something down your throat, a special scope that can look right into your heart. And they take two big electric bolts, <laughs> if you will. And they electrocute me. <laughs> yeah, the old Frankenstein approach. Yeah, I was going to say they go Frankenstein on your ass. Well, they? what they do? What they do is they shock the heart back into its rhythm. Into rhythm. Yeah, and and uh, did you feel electricity going through your body? Yeah. No, because I'm uh, I'm asleep too. Oh, you were, you were asleep when this happens, wow. and uh, now his heart is right on is beating just fine, right? I'm good now. The old lub dub. Yeah. Yeah. So I like it. So, well, good. I was worried about you there. And I, yeah. and then I, when I found out that it wasn't anything to worry about, it was actually something that made you better. Yeah. Renee says that I don't have a heart. So. He's <laughs> the tin man. I don't need one. Was that an 80s hit by Gloria Estefan? Arrhythmia is going to get you? Yeah. That, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Rob just pulled the pun of the night. There you go. Oh, do they have that plane when you come into the surgery area? Rhythm's gonna get you, uh, eh. and the doctor starts dancing. Uh, anyway, that would be fun. Every time I walk into the hospital, I go, "Just remember, I am here to improve the economy of New York, <laughs> Connecticut." <laughs> That's good. Yeah, Eric spills the Tin Man. So they don't think it's either the. You have two valves in your heart, right? Two extra valves. Well, we all have four. Okay, I'm sorry. But okay. you have pig and cow? Oh, yeah. Well, I have five, I guess. That's the way to look at it. Next, he's going to get kitty cat. <laughs> oh. yeah. We should make a Halloween costume for you. We should yeah. get him a uh, get Do you find with the pig valve that you're starting to root around and uh, look for truffles? Yes. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't use the pig valve anymore. 
No. Because it was it was wearing out. Jeff is a tribute to medical science. Absolutely. I mean, really. I mean, uh, it has saved his life, and it's it's actually Simple. improved it, right? Yeah. So, Absolutely. You know, yeah. this is the only guy I know that's happy that he went to the hospital and got his heart shot. I'd be like, right? <laughs> <friend. laughs> well, yeah, I, I always say, surgery is my friend. Wow, he's got to be. Wow. So. Anyway, so non-invasive surgery like a colonoscopy and a PSA test would be your best buddy. Oh yeah, but okay. I actually the last valve change that I had was done in a catheter catheter approach, Up your- and it's called a taser. Taser, I guess is what they call it. Taver, excuse me, taver. Mm-hmm. Okay, and in the taver. They put a catheter into your artery, go over there where the existing valve is. Mm -hmm. They put a new valve on top of it with a stent and with a balloon, expand it. It's on. They take the balloon away and you're done. And you you wake up and... uh, What's amazing now about all, feel great. what what's amazing about all this surgery is that it's non invasive, really. Technically, it's non invasive. Yeah. I mean, it is invasive because it goes inside of you, but it it's basically non invasive. I mean, yeah. uh, call it minimal. I, I was looking into hernia operations because I have a hernia, and maybe someday I'll have to have the operation. They just pu- few little puncture marks. That's it. You know, they go in there, they do it all uh, uh, laparoscopically. It's amazing what they're doing today. You know. If you can afford it, <laughs> that's why we should have free. How did you ta- how did uh, how do you take care of this? Medicare takes care of a good portion of it, of course. Yeah. And then you have plus, you then you have the supplemental, right? Plus the sub. So how much did it cost you to walk out of the hospital? Nothing. Nothing. Wow. That must have sent a shutter down, Phil Spun. And that's how we like it. That's you how. Pay- he you pay for this insurance? Well, he, of course, he pays for he pays for his Medicare, and he yeah. pays for uh, he pays for uh, the supplemental. Between the Medicare and the supplemental, I'd say you're probably pouring out about three hundred bucks a month, maybe. Mm, I should ask my accountant here. Yeah. Hey, hey, Pamela. Yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, it, it. You know, of course, you pay for Medicare. Uh, out of your social security, I mean, it's so. Why? Why should he even worry about that? Why shouldn't he just be focused well, on why, healing? Why should anybody worry about it? You know, there are people who don't have Medicare yet because they're not old enough, and they don't. Or if you have Medicare but you can't afford the supplemental, that's that's the killer as well. I was looking at supplemental for girlfriend and I in New York City. It would cost somewhere like two hundred and thirty-eight dollars, maybe two hundred fifty-eight dollars a month per person. Well, you know, for people on fixed incomes, that's a lot of money just for that twenty percent that Medicare yeah, doesn't pay for. I'm paying three hundred, three hundred a month. Okay, well, and and that's for your supplemental, do- right? Or, that's or for the supplemental. And then you're also paying another maybe hundred and ten out of your Social Security for Medicare. Right. But I'm. Unfortunately, I'm paying a thousand nine now. That's for, because you're a youngin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a and that's fine, but still, four hundred's a lot of money for it an is. older, Why do we older want to person. Do that to somebody? Why do we want that to be this way for a fellow American? Why can't he? Why does he have to suffer like that? So they share the pool, and that's what it costs. If people would be get uh, be healthier and not smoke and do a bunch of other things, hey, then and, maybe if, if they and if they weren't overweight, muscles. Phil, you forgot that one. Hey, hey, I'm down thirty pounds. You know. Yeah, but you got so, you're down thirty pounds, but you haven't dropped a pound since you lost that thirty pounds. No, but uh, I will. Oh, really? Well, have you given up sugar yet? You said. Yeah. You, you gave oh, yeah. it, you have all refined sugar. Yeah, I can't have any sugar. I use uh, all a I'm bit saying that what you've done to your body, you've already done, whether you're losing weight now or not doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just uh, signed up for uh, Pilates at the at Ooh. the gym. So I'm going to have a private instructor and I'm going to do Pilates on one of the. Uh, uh, what do you call that machine? The point I'm uh, making is, is that some people. Uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, are unhealthy for other reasons other than something they inflicted upon themselves. Yeah. All right, 
Uh, well, yes, that's Re- probably yes, be yes, most people. That's probably most people. Renee, uh, so that's that's uh, we've we've had uh, you know uh, things for uh, people that because of no. Uh, thing on their own. I mean, if somebody's born with uh, 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 muscular dystrophy or something like that, and their parents can't take care of it, there, there, there's a safety net in this country uh, that, that that takes care of that. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. There's not. It's, 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 it's a county level thing. It's uh, it's a state by state entity that. And it's everybody. it's the it is the cheapest kind of care they can give you. It's well, not, you know, it's you're not going to find the healthcare. kind of, 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 of uh, expert who knows how to really take care of you. You're going to get some kind of... Uh, You'd be surprised. Uh, and, and also... I don't th- understand how an American wouldn't want this country to be as great as it can be and for people who live in it to be treated a certain way. I how mean, you, Americans you, I mean, are against you, that. You wore a hat that said, make America great again, but it's not going to be great until we start taking care of each other. Right. Well, I don't understand that. A couple different ways of doing it, you know. I think yes, we have to take care of one another, but it's up to us as individuals <clears throat> to help and to do what we need to do. I don't think it's the government's position. Uh, yeah, right. Jeff, yeah. Alex, uh, as being part of. Uh, Wait a minute. Let me just say something quickly, Jeff, and then to to Phil while I'm thinking about it. Go ahead. Yeah, if Phil, we pay taxes. We should get something for our money, and if yeah. it's good health. That's the best way our money can come We're back to us. We're not paying 70% of our money in taxes mm. like they do in some of these other countries. I, that, uh, uh, no, but all but I'm it, saying is we could take care of ourselves. And 70%, you find me a country where 70% is the tax rate. I was going to say Sweden, Sweden. You keep, you keep bringing not, I looked up Sweden. It's something like 50-some-odd yeah, percent. It's nobody's no, seven. No. Plus they, other no, it's not 70%. You just throw these numbers out. Jeff. <laughs> Because you're uh, you're in the military, Alex, don't you get a benefit from that? Doesn't, yeah, I, does, I, 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 I've never taken advantage of any of them. Uh, and, although and girlfriend I, girlfriend has gone out and gotten all we've we've gotten all the information I need and we've registered me and so I think there are I can get like a a loan for a home if I want it you know a vet's loan yeah uh, I can get uh, I might even be able to go to a VA hospital in some situations sure you could. yeah uh, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, hey Alex if I said have I said it yet today what thank you for your service oh well it's a pleasure, <laughs> it's a pleasure. Uh, debt mark is 60.4 percent Still uh, not seventy. You're bad. Uh, you it Phil, you said seventy. So, All right, Sweden. Sweden's at sixty-one point four. Also, uh-huh. what do they get for their money? Oh uh, man, well, they, they, get they get a they get a lot of stuff, but you know, yeah, they get a lot of stuff that that would wind up costing them oh. the difference between what we pay here and yeah. what they so, pay there. Look, yeah, I'm paying instead of getting bombs, you're getting services. I'm paying twelve thousand dollars a year, a thousand nine dollars a month, and I've got all the services that you you, you need except for twelve thousand dollars a month. That's uh, what uh, twelve thousand dollars a month. Twelve thousand a year. Twelve thousand a year. Mm-hmm. You, you don't get to just gloss over cancer like it's your bitch because it ain't. Well, so uh, you know, you, you can make from that statement opinion, different. Coming away from the second opinion, I might just do the surgery, and uh, uh, when it comes time, he told me just to watch and wait, basically, uh, for what I've got with the low grade of cancer that I have. Yeah, uh, but you your second PSA. You can't test. even get a high class cancer. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. Bada boom. But I'm getting a uh, I'm getting another biopsy in December. Yeah. So you were going to get another PSA test before then. Yeah, as soon as I as soon as I stop beating off, I'll go in and have them. <laughs> and the other thing we were talking about is the reformer. What's the name of his doctor? Yeah, the reformer. <laughs> right, that's the Pilates machine that I'll be working on. Tell her that she needs to put you on the Cadillac because you've been a very bad boy. Well, they have a whole room of reformers, and they're all the $3,000 ones. Right. Uh, I looked them up online. There's a bunch of different models. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. These are the Pilates machines. Yeah, this is that's getting oh, this part of the discussion is getting boring. Yeah, oh, reformers, do you you want to get your ass kicked? Go take a class on a reformer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I will eventually take the class. Well, get your right ass now. kicked. Try no, and be a reformer. 
If the uh, person who is the, can I say something? Yes. Can you imagine if Phil's Pilates instructor is a Hillary Clinton voter? <laughs> <laughs> I keep my mouth shut. He comes in with that Make America Great. I'm going to make. Yeah, wear your Great American uh, hat thing. Well, I, I live across the street from the gym, so it's it's it should be easy oh, for me to get Oh, here. I see. Well, listen, I I, I live um, a block and a half away from my gym, and I've yet to visit it. Are you yeah. still paying for that? I still pay fifteen bucks a month. We should just go and say hello. Yeah, I might drop by and say hello. Well, yeah, I was I, mean, I was going to go. I was going to go for the, uh, the to do some exercises for the uh, 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 torn uh, meniscus that I have, but they, I then went and got myself a physical therapist. And okay. I think tomorrow I have a doctor there too. She's going to give me a shot in my knee. And uh, Jan Hutchins was trying to get me to go to the gym. Uh, which I, you know, I've rarely walked into in the last two years that I've joined this one. See? So that's how they make money, so off guys like you and right. I. Yeah, exactly. So uh, he said to me, he said, "Just go over there and and cross the threshold." So I crossed the threshold and I took a picture of my feet on the other side of the threshold. I, I thought I could see you in the gym though, because you were a cop. Huh? See, I could see you working now. You were a cop, but it's not funny. Cops aren't healthy. You ever really, see how don't... fat some of those cops are? How the how the belt is going over their the tummy is going over their belt. I'm surprised they can even get to the bullets. I used they to really the... should crack down on those guys. I used to use the gym at the PD. Huh? I used to use the gym at the PD. It was it was nice. Yeah, what do they serve? Donuts? <laughs> <laughs> My understanding is that the uh and when you're when you're in training hey, by the way are you home officer. are you home brian i am oh turn on your camera it is i thought it was on no but, uh, anyway i'll there we go my there understanding go. is that uh uh when you're in training to be a police officer in good that, shape. that you have to be in in oh, pretty yeah. in, in good shape or it's not tip-top shape but then after you graduate they they don't, don't, it's, it's, it's it's time for it's time for it's time to hit the donut store. But Tony's on to something. I think he has a he has a point. They should crack down on it. Yeah, I think they should have actually crack standards crack throughout the be career. Reasonably, unless you're like a test jockey or something, and then you know maybe relax there. But, I mean, if you're out, that's on the what they're. Always, I mean, sometimes you're right. I I just think like you see a cop, it's like. You want to have the guy in reasonable, the woman in reasonable, good shape. I'm not now that. you know what we need. We need good American. Uh, part of our free health care should also be dental as well. Yeah, I can, oh, yeah. because oh, yeah. I, I'm facing I, I'm facing some rather large. Uh, I'm not going to get an implant if I have to lose this tooth, but I do have to get like a little false tooth to put in there. All of that. That's going to cost me two grand between the <gasps> extraction and you know whatever. So you I'm, deals on implants now. Uh, they're a lot cheaper, and you can find a. Place I know I've place. seen some, but I don't know if I trust it. I saw one place that would do for fifteen hundred bucks would do the implant and the crown. Why don't you look them up on Yelp? Well, uh, maybe I'll do that. I don't know, but I mean that just that scares me. Well, why can't this charge be seven fifty for a crown? But she said she saved me cash. Oh, uh, crowns your today! Crown, a crown today. I need a crown replaced over here because it's falling apart. Uh, is uh, fifteen hundred bucks? Yeah. You know, wow, that's, that's and, an and I have insurance, but it only covers about fifteen hundred dollars worth, and it would cover fifty percent of the crown. So then I have to still pay seven fifty. I mean, yeah, the the cost of dentistry is just extraordinary, and I think that it used to be very cheap. It was cheap in comparison to going to a doctor. But now it's really expensive, and I think that we need dental care for people as well as as my well dentist, as Medicare. My dentist just bought a race car, so his rates went up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I got the same. I got the same problem. I just had an extraction as well. Yeah. Why? And they want three thousand dollars for to do two crowns on either side oh. and put a bridge in. And, and, and to put a bridge in, yeah, bridges are expensive. But you, you know, like if you miss, if, if you're missing just one tooth, there's a thing they gave me when I was getting my, uh, my what do you call it, my uh, implant, and it was just a false tooth that just clips right in. You just clip it right in to the space, and mm -hmm. I think I could live with that. That I didn't mind having in my mouth. You know, in fact, sometimes I would go to sleep with it because I forgot to take it out at night. But that they I it, they call it a flipper. They call That's it a, what they call me. Uh, a uh, flipper where it, it goes up to the roof of your mouth. 
Well, it goes up and it just clip, clips <clears throat> right into either tooth on either side. Yeah, like a bridge. It, it works right. fine, you know, and it, they cost about 750 bucks and they'll probably last forever. No, I think they break. Well, if they break, you get a new one every year. Who cares, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the one that I got uh, didn't even wear down in the, oh, four months that I, no, six months that I had it. And, get them to uh, buy you a 3D printer. And what no. bothered me was when they finally, when they finally, you know, put in the post for the crown, uh, the implant post. Um, uh, I, I had a three seven hundred and fifty dollar false tooth. I've never been able to use again. In fact, I had two of them, one for each time that I, that I got an implant. But by the time you're through with an implant, you've spent six thousand dollars. That's a lot. Right? You know. Oh, yeah. yeah, they wanted to give me an implant, but I, I'm not going to get one. Well, I mean, it, it, they're wonderful if they're, if, you know, all I'm saying, I've seen some inexpensive prices on implants. I don't trust it, but maybe they're just fine. You know, you, who well, knows? It might be worth a try. I mean, instead of getting the, the other thing, give it a try, you know, if it's inexpensive. But if it's bad, you're going to lose your jaw, part of your jawbone. You think? Possibly. Well, they can, they can, Real into it. they can screw it up. Yeah. They can screw it up good. You know, but it, it. Do you know who invented implants? No. Uh, uh, South Sea tribes. Really? Yeah, oh, they the used to do. Ones? They would take. They would take a, a, a stick or bamboo or whatever, and then they would pound it into the person's jaw, and then they would put a false tooth on it. They used to you do think that it's a new if your fingernails too. Yeah, but you think it's a new technology, but actually it goes back several centuries. This is okay, they want to charge you fifteen more anesthesia. Holy shit! I, I think that was Renee, right? You were the one who was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have, a girlfriend has a new dentist. She wants me to go God to. Damn. Because she takes our insurance, and I would go, except she just told me she won't do gas. And come on, you know, the only fun to going to a dentist is doing the fucking gas. Do you realize that I've never had gas just for a dental appointment? And when you talk about this, this makes my mouth drool because I want to find a dentist that will actually do this because it sounds crazy. It's wonderful. He could yank out every tooth in your mouth and you wouldn't care. Well, I used to, I used to get gas to get my teeth cleaned. And, I did too. I did too. Yeah, and especially to, uh, you know, before a Novocaine needle. But my dentist, the one I have now, he prides himself on being able to shoot you with the Novocaine and you don't feel it. And, he, and That's he's right. okay. Uh, it's not that you, it's, I know that he's put Novocaine in my, in my jaw know. and numb it enough that he can pull the tooth and I won't feel a damn thing. That's fine. I don't However, I'm going to be aware of the whole process and I'd rather be high while it's happening. See, I want that. Who, who doesn't want that out of a dentist, out of any doctor? And you know, <laughs> and you know, he'll he'll give me the no, he'll give me the gas if I if I say I want it. You know, he doesn't uh, doesn't stop. It doesn't stop it. You know, he'll give it to you. He has it. They charge but, you extra for the gas now. It used to be free. Yeah, yeah. it used well, to be free. It was. In fact, I had one doctor. The first time I ever used gas, he said, "You want to get high?" That's how he put it. He was the hippie dentist. Do you you want to get high? And, and he would throw the mask on me, man. And I was off to La La Land, and he could have done anything he wanted to with me. I mean, he may have while I was asleep. You oh, know. oh, you go right well, to sleep. When you wake up, you anyway, wait, wait, wait a minute. Diane is calling at the last minute. So she's made it a full house is what she's done. Hello, it's, Diane. It's hey. Hey, Diane. Welcome. I thought I had video, but just for a second. Hi, guys. I've been listening. Um, I just want to mention a real quick thing about the VA. Um, I do use the VA for my medical, mm -hmm. and I plan to use it as my supplementary to my Medicare also, mm -hmm. which is something, uh, you know, you don't have to do no pay no premiums. Also, there's a dental plan now uh, that Delta does called VADP. It's a v Veterans Administration Dental Plan, VADIP, yeah, Dental Insurance Plan. And it's um, for veterans. It's like twenty dollars a month. It's right. pretty. It, it's pretty good. What do you mean? How much it, does it cover? Well, it's like you know, your typical dental thing. You know, fifty percent of this and that. I do have to wait a year to be able to do like major like. Uh, now, what is this? Is this is who who has this Delta? It's through Delta. It's it's uh, V V A. And, and all I ha and all you have to do is show your uh, your papers. Don't even have to. I just did it online with my social security number. 
And it, but you, you were formerly in the military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I was eight so years you have in a the DD. Navy. Yeah, DD. because I was in the Navy for for. Uh, two, yeah, I get two just, years. They have your records under under your social security number. Just of, uh, it's under V A D I P Veterans Administration VA, Delta Insurance Plan. V A D I P. Hold on a second. V A D I P. V A D I P. I think it's dot org. You could just Google that. D I D I P. D I P. Yeah, it's through Dent. It's through Delta. I just kind of came across it when I was cruising, you know, shopping for Delta. So I am. How does your supplemental work if it's with the VA? Do you have insurance? Your main insurance with the VA or with some? Oh, so you use the VA for both your main and your... Well, and I don't, I'm not on Medicare yet. <laughs> I'm getting close, though. I'm 60 years old. So there's, old. A supplemental, okay. there's a supplemental insurance for veterans? That's it, that, you can use that because I know you have to have that supplemental with the Medicare, right? No, you can use that as your supplemental. Because, I, I mean, even, e even with two years in the military, I guess I qualify, huh? Yeah, yeah, if you're active duty, two years active duty. Yep. Yeah, because a lot of the, the guys um, that I have in the nursing homes, they, they, their supplemental is the VA. And if they, you know, they have special, you know, VA specialty, yeah. they, 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 they send transportation and take them right to the VA hospital for their, you oh, know, but they spe have to specialist appointments. The they mm -hmm. have to. They have to do it at the VA. Yeah, they but they send they tran they send transportation. They bring you know these. Well, of course, this is the, the you know the guys that are in the in the nursing homes. But um, but yeah, it's you know they they do they take care of them, and I I like it because I don't have any premiums. You know, I mean I you know I pay some copays, but not nothing outrageous. Yeah, well, you know, I'll I'll check into yeah. that. I I didn't realize that existed, but the dental is what I'm interested yeah, in. Yeah, cuz yeah, it's like yeah, it's 20 bucks a month and, and that's for and that's like the medium plan. Well, that's and then, then fuck you, Rob. Don't thank me for my service. I'm getting something for it. <laughs> hey, you know, Alex, you and I had a friend I had you you had an acquaintance and I had a friend uh that uh used the VA when he had uh uh he had brain cancer. And I used to take him to uh, get his uh, radiation shots or radiation, not shots, but uh, yeah. uh, uh, once a week. And uh, he swore he swore by them. And this is a guy oh, that yeah. had been around, you know, Duke Skinner. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's you know, he, he was a good guy. And, you know, but I, I used to take him to get his shot to get his radiation. Yeah, although the yeah, I just want to get a knee brace for my knee, and I was like, "Okay, you guys gonna bill me?" They're like, "Nope, that's fine." It's you yeah. Know, he said those people were wonderful. Give it to you. I would just feel like such a pussy, though. I only did two years, and I get to use the VA. That's all, that's all yeah, it takes. Well, you were, <clears> you know, you got a DD two fourteen, right? It, it, whatever it is, yeah, DD yeah, two fourteen, yeah. Right. Well, then you qualify. Yeah, yeah. I did, we 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 sent away well, and got I'm, my I'm papers, so I ha I have them now. What? You were honorably discharged, so oh, you yeah. qualified. Oh, yeah. 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 Was, does that, also mean, does that also mean your wife gets those benefits? No. No. Just me. Oh. Just yeah. me. But it's definitely worth looking into. They'll bury you, too, you know. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, like <laughs> what? Wait, what? I put a link on Facebook to their website. Oh, okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, that. that's nice. Hey, listen. It's uh, kind of time to go here. This is the second show I've done today. I saw the first one on YouTube. Yeah, it was yeah, kind of, it was it was kind just of fun. Yeah, I was made aware of that while I was working. It's just nice yeah, just to... Yeah, across it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, and we'll try to hopefully in the future when we do comedians and stuff and try and put the video on, it'll look a little bit better. I'll do it on the same machine that I play this on. I think it'll work better. Oh, I look good. I know Scotty looked pretty good out there in the, yeah. uh, the great outdoors. Oh, yes, he did. Anyway, thank <laughs> you, Renee. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Bree from Dubai. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, uh, Dubai and Hawaii. Wow, what a distance. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Diane, thank Banning you. Phil, thank you this evening. Uh, Brian, always a pleasure. Tony, terrific. Tim, thank you. Let me just say to everybody, get lost. <laughs> bye bye. Glad to be yeah, here. Those, wow. uh, that's our that's our uh, so your color I said fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alex Bennett. That's all she wrote. Stay tuned now for uh, Jack and Amy. They're gonna do the intersection after that. That's connections at uh, one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time. Same station in life, and in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>